Kevin Ian. Welcome. Hey, Katie. Thanks for having Hi. us. Hi, Katie. We're looking forward to this. Thanks for having us on. I am excited to chat with both of you together because I've had you both on separately. And I think this conversation will go in a lot of fun directions. And Philip, we've talked before about some of the things that will be foundational to this conversation in our last episode, which I will link in the show notes for you guys listening at wellnessmama.fm. But to start really broad, can you guys just kind of give us an overview of what you've developed and sort of the concepts behind it? Because I think quantum energy might be a somewhat new concept or at least one that's a little bit hard to understand for some people. Yes, absolutely. So I'll start maybe, and then Ian always has a great addition usually. And uh, the good good news about today is that we've we've made so much progress also in regards to studies that we can talk a whole lot more about scientific results and and things that are really really tangible for this concept of quantum energy, which is difficult to understand for some, quite frankly. But it's really the energy behind matter right? Uh, the quantum energy, the energy that you find in every cell, because every cell in our body has a quantum energy field. Now, we developed the technology that is able to concentrate, to highly concentrate natural, pure quantum energy um, in between the plates. That's our, you know, the so-called block technology. And that is actually the the profound breakthrough uh, in this because you can now leverage this harmonious quantum energy in ways that wasn't possible before. And then, yes, we work with different frequencies also so that we can create different products for certain use cases. That in a nutshell is really what we do. And from the beginning, we've started to do a lot of testing and research, obviously, and we've come a pretty long way. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing what we can share and also something that's really interesting for families and kids. And yeah, so I think it, it, it is a pretty broad use case. Yeah, and the only thing I would add is that it, typically, especially in my domain in the sciences, is uh, most people think of, you know, the three pounds of squishy gray matter as being the uh, the center point of all of the expression of everything that comes out from that. And I would posit that it's actually not that consciousness is really the fundamental and the link between consciousness and quantum energy is, is very, very deep. Um, and because of that, when you modulate things at the level of quantum energy or consciousness, those things cascade up and they have very profound effects when you start looking at the ramifications, both molecularly and then chemically and then biochemically. Uh, and you can see, I mean, we've done experiments live, we've done, you know, things that are posted on YouTube and real time, you know, uh, dark field microscopy, where you can see that the actual effects happen very rapidly, but that's because we're addressing things at the base level and then letting it cascade up to the level of physicality. And I, I think often, you know, again, especially in the sciences, people think, ah, everything stems from, you know, matter first, energy second, when in fact it, all of the evidence really points to the the contrary that things stem from something energetic that's representative of harmonics and waveforms and patterns aggregating and coalescing to become matter and the expressions thereof yeah so let's go deeper on that idea of maybe a little bit deeper explanation of what quantum energy is and maybe an explanation going into the angle of energy first, matter second, because I think you're right, that's a new concept for a lot of people. And maybe contrary to what some of us learned in, you know, high school biology or chemistry, for example. Probably all of us, contrary to what all of us were taught. <laughs> yeah, Philip, why don't, why, don't you, uh, why don't you jump in on that one? Well, so, you know, I leave the scientific explanation to Ion, but really I want to repeat quantum energy is the energy behind the matter. I think that's the most important concept for people to understand because we feel matter. We see matter. When I touch my microphone, <coughs> excuse me, it's matter, but there's energy behind it. And uh, why don't you take on, I'm going to mute myself real quick. <laughs> so. Sure. so actually going, going in accord with what Philip is saying there, the idea of that example, when you touch a microphone, the reality is you're not actually touching anything. Uh, you're actually feeling the repulsion of an electron cloud against the electron clouds and your atoms. 
And so at its most subtle level, when you go beyond the level of, you know, the, the subatomic particles, you know, protons, neutrons, and electrons, and then you start looking at the particles that are fundamental for those, you know, quarks, leptons, muons, all that kind of stuff. And then you keep going down. What physics is kind of deeming kind of the most probable thing now is that all those things are aggregates of vibrating strings of energy. And so you have to ask yourself, well, anything that vibrates, we know from larger macroscopic scale things, anything that vibrates, vibrates at a specific rate, right? The frequency. And then there are other attributes like amplitude and things like that. Um, I, I actually can, can probably easily define about 18 different things that, that we would use to quantify how something is vibrating. But when you start to look at that and you start to think about it, the energy occurs as the substrate and then there's a certain resonance and those patterns build and start to coalesce and so the the question generally becomes what causes that to happen and and i would posit that the quantum energy is an affect of consciousness and that consciousness propagates a resonant field in a certain pattern and then things start to aggregate around that and you can you can work it both ways you can look from the top down or the bottom up but if you're trying to solve puzzles and, and fix problems, you know, physical problems, which is generally what, what we mostly deal with, um, you, you need to be, as Thoreau would say, you know, the person hacking at the branches, not at, you know, or rather for every thousand hacking at the branches of evil, there's one hacking at the root. You want to be that guy, right? We want to address things at the base. And in order to do that, we can't go with the misconception that, oh, we're going to address the macroscopic things and that'll take care of what the issue is. Generally speaking, the issue actually occurs before you notice it. It's like people complaining about, you know, waves washing up on their beachfront cottage and saying, oh, my God, we've got to block waves. Waves are the issue. When, you know, 50 yards out, there's a boat zipping by. You really have to be able to assess what's causing the problem. What's the impetus for what you're dealing with? And I think that's what we're doing here is we're addressing things at a fundamental level. And when you address it at a fundamental level, you're able to elicit a huge response that's very far outsized. It's, it's that critical point analysis of looking at the one spot in the locomotive where you can place your finger over a vacuum port and shut down the entire engine. You know, huge outcome, very small movement. And that's really what happens when you start addressing things from the level of quantum energy and consciousness. Yes, indeed. And so what, what I would add just for some of the people that have a hard time, you know, following the, the science and, and, and definitions, it can be also very exper experiential. So if, if you just, you, and you may know this already, but for the ones that, that don't know, you can just close your eyes and start to feel. And as you go more into this meditative state, you suddenly can feel that there is energy even around you. And, and that's, that's something that's very, very tangible because you can feel it. And people talk about electromagnetic fields a lot, for example, but that's also something we don't feel that necessarily if we're going about our days. But there's some people that are very, very sensitive to that. Other people that are seers, they can see that. But even a normal person can, if you tune in, um, you know, you could, and you have your Wi-Fi turned off, and then you turn it on, you can feel these things. You can, you can train your senses that way. <clears throat> so the same with the quantum energy, it's something you can feel. I understand though that most people have a hard time to feel it, but in 100% of the cases, you can actually measure what it does and not just on an energetic level. And that is what, what Ian explained really that we're, we're, we're coming from the fundamental level, from the basis, if you will, but it's not just working on, on energy, it's, it's really able to change matter uh, in a positive and frankly significant way. So as an example, if we, if we look at the blood, blood, it couldn't be more physical, right? If we look at our blood and there's a live blood analysis, that's what it's called, where you use dark field microscopes and you look at the actual blood in real time and you can you can illuminate these blood cells. So you can see the red blood cells and the white blood cells, see how they're moving. Then if, if you're in a, in a room where there's no Wi-Fi and then suddenly you turn Wi-Fi on, you can see very rapidly that 
the, um, the blood is starting to clot. They build these money rolls and, and certainly other things happen as well. Another example is that the white blood cells tend to get paralyzed uh, when Wi-Fi is turned on. And the white blood cells are you know, directly connected to the immune system. So that's, that's your force, if you will. And if they're paralyzed, you, know, you basically don't have an army to defend yourself. That's how you can think about the white blood cells. Now, um, as you then introduce a block, for example, and you, you turn on a block and you leave Wi-Fi on, suddenly what happens is that up to stage one and stage two of blood clotting is being reversed within just 10 minutes. And the white blood cell activity and motility uh, suddenly increases. And actually everything that you can look at uh, in the blood, and now we've gone even further. So, and, and, I, and this is even new to you. I just sent it to you right before uh, this interview. Uh, they even were able to see a reduction in parasitic load, a significant reduction, a significant reduction in co cholesterol levels. So it's super, super physical. And that all happens in just a few minutes. And you think it's magic, but really it isn't because what it does, it, 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 it helps a living organism to come into the optimal balance again. And of course, if we're, if we're full of toxins, if we're full of parasites, if we're full of blood clotting, all that, that's not our optimal level. So it, it, it offers the opportunity for the body to actually get in that gear of now taking that balance and, and moving things that are in not good shape into better shape relatively rapidly. And I want to say, these are not just some random experiments that were done. No, there are multiple institutes and doctors practices that have now really studied this deeply in randomized double blind studies with statistical significance. So what we're saying here is not just some something that we witness, you know, in a one-off picture or so. This is this these these are claims that we're making that are backed up by real science. Yeah, it's very much real science. We can take the quantum blocks and take substances in the laboratory and actually from the same sample pool have one vial placed in the block and leave one vial out of the block then run a spectral analysis on them and get different results after literally 15 minutes in a block. Uh, and and re in reality, it doesn't actually take 15. It's even faster than that. But um, just to get a very significant, a significant difference, you can see it incredibly clearly. It actually looks like two different molecular species when you run the analysis on them. But they're, if you run it through a chromatograph, you see that it's the same thing. But when you look at reduction oxidation potential, it responds like an entirely different molecule. And that's that very clearly demonstrates that there's something happening at a fundamental level that cascades all the way up through the molecular level and gives the same molecule a different potential to react more fully. And everything we've seen so far, which is actually to me kind of the amazing part, is that it, it balances physiology which is brilliant, uh, you know, the, that's something, auto, it basically it's auto-tuned for molecules, which is truly amazing. I mean, anybody who looks at this and isn't blown away, a little dumbfounded and kind of left with a very deep sense of reverence probably isn't paying attention and doesn't get it. And I wanna go deeper on the studies in just a second, but just to make sure I am understanding the concept before we move on, it seems like this leads to the obvious question of how then do we kind of upgrade this quantum energy within the body? And I think often in the health world, what I see is people wanting to focus on that more physical chemical side, whether it be through nutrition and supplements, which not to discount those at all, I would guess this is very much a two-way street that when you're supporting the body in those ways, it actually probably helps make the quantum energy go up a little bit as well. But maybe as an example here, one thing I noticed, I, and you mentioned the consciousness connection. And for a decade, mm -hmm. I was doing all those physical chemical things with diet and supplements and exercise and sleep and all the things that they tell you will help with getting rid of health conditions. And it wasn't until I kind of did the inner work and let go of things like fear and shame and anger and resentment that those things actually started really having an effect. And I noticed a complete change in my physical health without changing any of those other physical factors. And I've talked about that on this podcast before, but I think 
all the things you just said lead to that question of then how do we change our quantum energy? Well, there's a, a ton of ways. I think we can both jump in on that, but there, uh, I, you know, for me personally, uh, the thing that probably opened, opened things up for me more than just anything else, it was a big needle mover was meditation. And if you think about it, if you just want to go back to the science and say, oh, you know, everything else is soft science gobbledygook. Well, every time you have an emotion, every time you have a thought, it sends out some sort of chemical correlate, right? And a chemical correlate by definition is actually, you know, a quantum function because all of those molecules have an electrical potential, a waveform, a frequency, an emissive correlate. Everything is linked. And so if you change your awareness, there is a direct physical link. You know, if you look at any study on survival potential of people with cancer, any oncologist will tell you if somebody is tending towards thinking they're kind of the Eeyore and they're going to die, they're not going to fare as well as somebody who's on the other side of the spectrum thinking that they're going to do well. So those two things work in accord. For me, it, it was meditation to kind of clear things out, release things and move forward. Philip, uh, you know, feel free. What was yours? Yeah, so obviously for me, it was also meditation and it was yoga, uh, various forms of yoga, and then actually Kundalini yoga, because I find that to be the most energetic and most complete form that at least I have tried so far. And that started to open the doors for me to this inner world. And that is what you mentioned, Katie, right? So I think most people, and, and we've all witnessed that um, in the past, we are we're so rational and, and we're, we're so physical and we're, and yeah, we're, we're trying to solve all problems with the physical, which in this case would be supplements. Supplements are amazing, but supplements can only go that far because we are uh, consciousness beings, right? So we are energetic beings in this physical body. And if we're just taking care of one part of the equation, the actually most fundamental part of it is being left out completely. So as we, let that in more and also take care of that, then that's where the real healing can happen, right? And, and healing, what, what is that? Is to be whole is to be healed. And uh, that's, that's kind of the concept. Healing has been beaten up quite a bit as a, as a word, and we cannot even use it, <laughs> right, officially. But, you know, that's, that's kind of the idea about it. Now, the, the new thing is that you know, with the, with the blocks, for example, you can provide such a concentrated quantum energy field, which actually can be measured on the Hawkins scale. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but uh, David Hawkins, uh, he wrote a um, great book, Power Versus Force, and you can actually read the, uh, listen to the audio book. That's, that's even more convenient. And he set a scale from zero to 1,000 with different consciousness levels. And Ian could go way more into this than I can, but it's a frame of reference. So everything above 500 is kind of like unconditional love and, 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 and so on. And, and low levels would be, you know, if, if you're very jealous, very extremely like fear driven and, and, and things like that. And then as you go higher into these higher consciousness levels, you know, there's way more expansion and way more uh, things possible. And you can measure our blocks um, on that scale, and it's extremely profound. There's nothing else out there, frankly, that, that rates so high on the Hawkins scale um, than that, and it's because of this high vibration. And so if you're then around such a high level of vibration, that's when you can literally upgrade yourself because it's, it's almost like, wow, you're in the desert and you're totally dry and you haven't drunk water for two days and then there is suddenly fresh water and you're drinking that and, and that feeling on an energetic level happens if, if you have access to a source where you can fill yourself up with that type of energy. And that, of course, doesn't mean that you should stop taking supplements. No, but actually what happens is the supplements that you're taking, those work then actually even better than before. One thing I, I'd add is uh, on the note of the, the physical things, all, all of this stuff is basically a function of waveforms, right? When your consciousness is cleared and going up and you're moving up, say the, the Hawkins scale for reference, um, you're harmonically different 
than you would be if you were lower. Things, everybody's had the experience of walking into a room and people inside the room are angry and you feel it, it's palpable. Well, that, that's because there is definitely an emissive function happening. The, the waves of energy are coming off, whether it's emotions, you know, positive or negative. And th again, you know, for most scientists, that sounds a little frou-frou, but one of the things that Philip and I did on stage last year um, was to take someone with a histamine reality or, or a histamine allergy for shellfish, a mutual friend of all of ours, Todd Shipman, uh, biohacker Todd, who does combo. And Todd came on stage and he was, he was super bold. Um, he asked me if, if I wanted to put the crab juice in his eye to see if he could get a reaction from it, which was, a little, you know, he's very trusting, but it was a little over the top. But we, we opted instead of putting it in his eyes just to derma roll his arm, which is akin to an old dermal stamp test for an allergist. And so we derma rolled his arm and put crab meat on it and the, the crab juice inflamed everything. Classic histamine reaction. Everything blew up, swelled up, got itchy, red, swollen, puffy. And then we put it in a quantum block for just a couple minutes and then took it out, derma rolled his other arm, put the crab juice on that and nothing happened. And, and you can find that on YouTube, but the, the reason nothing happened, it does seem like a magic trick to most people, but the reality is your body isn't reacting to the chemical first. It's reacting to the waveform that the chemical transmits, right? Because as I said earlier, the electrons repel against one another. You're never actually coming into contact with something. What you're coming into contact with is their field. And because of that, if you harmonize the field, the principle in physics is called additive resonant harmonics or destructive, right? So things can either be additive or destructive. And in this case, when you put things in a block and your consciousness is elevating, the block is moving you up, which is honestly quite profound because as Philip had said, I, I haven't personally seen anything else that has as much oomph as a quantum block. Um, it's kind of like if you could live in an old cathedral, you know, a really old, you know, thousand year old cathedral, it feels amazing. And, and what's really happening there is the harmonics of the different molecules are starting to move in accord with one another and they don't have an interaction that's detrimental or negative. And so in this case, the second reaction didn't exist. His body hadn't changed over three minutes, but what had happened is he was able to harmonize the compound using the interference patterns from the block. And so it benefited his entire system. So effectively his body had been upgraded. And, and that's, I think, what's difficult for a lot of people to grasp is that when your consciousness elevates and you use tools like the blocks and the cards uh, or the upgrade to elevate you, everything works in, in accord. And like you said, Katie, you're not, you know, I'm not proposing that, you know, we say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's uh, enlightenment through Twinkies. You know, I went the path of the hostess. Uh, you know, <laughs> you, you still you still have to do the right things. You don't want to go out and, and do something super detrimental. But these things can take you beyond the point where you'd normally get. If you have two people running a parallel track, doing all of the right stuff, the same supplementation, the same exercise, the same routines, and one is using this, they're going to outperform the other person. Just hands down, bar none. That's just the nature of dealing with things at the very fundamental level. And you guys have mentioned some of the studies in passing, but let's go deeper because I know you guys have actually looked really hard into the research side of this and have done some pretty substantial studies. So can you explain what you've done and what you've looked at in those studies? Yes, maybe I can get started. So first of all, various methods were used and various aspects were looked at by various institutes and doctor's offices. We found that important so that we don't just look at one, one aspect. So heart rate variability was one thing that was studied successful in 100% of the cases. Then the Emoto Institute in Japan uh, did, uh, did a study in regards to water and how the water was able to be structured and optimized by the quantum block and also by our water bottle. Um, now the results came back quite phenomenal and the quantum block was able to change water to the positive faster than any other device or any other method that they had ever tested. That was in three minutes. And now what actually happened is that the Emoto Institute for the first time in their existence um, are importing products to Japan 
exclusively to make them available um, to the Japanese people. And that's the Lila Quantum products. Um, so I, I think that that may actually say much more than just a study or a test because they're, they're seeing with their own eyes what this does. And then, you know, we had bio well testing. So people may be familiar with the so-called bio well device. It's a medical device in, in uh, Europe and Russia. And last but not least, the dark field microscopy live blood analysis, which I find the most profound and the most relevant because it's so physical, it's very visual. Like even people that don't know much about this, they can see the significant differences. And I want to mention because you know the main audience is, is in the US that um, in about 20 years ago, uh, it was decided at some point to charge every practitioner that uses um, live blood analysis um, hundred thousand dollars per year as a license fee in order to use it as a, as a diagnostic tool. And you know what practitioner can afford that, right? There's still some practitioners left that afford it, and then you can use it for research purposes, but not to actually use it without paying the license fee. That's why you don't find it in the US that much. It's very, very common, however, in European countries and many other countries. So in Europe, in every city, you have actually lots of practitioners uh, that, that use it. And because you can see your actual blood in real time, you can see what's going on, you can see even bacteria load and things like that. It's, it's quite impressive. And that has now been First, we started with tests, right? So that we gave our products to doctors that, that had this method. And then they would report each and every time that there were significant changes. And then we said, okay, great. It's nice to have that, but we need to be more scientific. So then they set up these randomized sham controlled double blind studies so that, and, and one single blind study, uh, which all of them rule out a placebo effect completely, right? Because you, you want to make sure that you know, it's nice. Placebo effect is actually something great, right? It's not bad, but we can say with certainty that in 100% of the cases, you can see changes and it has nothing to do with, uh, with, with placebo because it's ruled out. And yeah, we can go into more details of what you can see, of course, but those changes happen rapidly. So we're talking about, about 10 minutes, in some cases already five minutes, but most of the studies were done that you measure after 10 minutes again. And those changes were significant, absolutely. And then there were some studies that looked at the longer term and then it even further improved. So it's, it's very physical, it's very tangible, it's measurable, and we're talking about results. So the, in the dark field microscopy studies, we yet have to find a single person that doesn't see a significant optimization of his or her blood. In 100% of the cases, that has that's happened so far. <laughs> I, I just, that still blows me away. It's actually so, it's, it's such a statistical anomaly to do a test and have 100% correlation to the test. It's it's pretty much unheard of. It's just, you know, from, from, from the science standpoint, it's almost laughable. You really never get a hundred percent and almost everything here comes back at a hundred percent. Um, it, you know, and it, which again, goes back to make me thinking about how we really are dealing with the root because it's, it's almost like the, the results that come out of these tests and the data we see with the sets being so complete and always having a result. It's kind of like saying, well, the test was set up so that we push someone and if they move, we get a result and it's I, again, we're going back to the basics and it really is, it's dramatic. I, I would welcome anybody to look at those dark field microscopy studies because as Philip said, you don't have to be a scientist to understand the data set there. You can literally just look at the picture and go, wow, this looks horrible and this looks great. You know, and the span of time is five minutes. It's, it's, it's almost laughable how elegant it is. Which I think also leads to the question. So you guys have mentioned the block. Let's maybe explain a little bit more of what that is and what it's doing and then also how to use it because I have one in my house and also my office. But if someone who may not have a visual of what this is, we'll of course link in the show notes, but maybe explain what it is and how someone would use this in their home with their kids and their lives in general. 
Yes, so it's, I would say it's about eight by eight by eight inches. And it uh, has plates on the top and plates on the bottom. The quantum block is kind of like the, the, the softer device, if you will. It has one plate on the top and one on the bottom. And then the infinity block is the much stronger version. It has three plates on the top and three plates on the bottom. And nowadays we also have a so-called travel block, which actually we created based on customer requests. They wanted something that they can really easily travel with, put it in their car. So that's way smaller. Um, and uh, it has one plate on the top and one on the bottom, but it's inside, it's as strong as the infinity block. Um, and as strong, what does that mean? It's, it's, it has more power to move energy, to provide energy, to harmonize. It usually has a larger radius and it measures higher on the Hawkins scale. So that's when I say stronger, that's what I mean by that. And so it's very easy and simple to use. So frankly, every five-year-old can already understand what they can do with it and how to use it. The first thing is you don't have to do anything with it at all. You just put it in your home or in your hotel room or in your car in this case, and it harmonizes the energy in the whole area. De depending on the radius that it has. So the infinity block has a very large radius of, you know, about a kilometer even, that's, that's, that's very big. And then the quantum block covers at least a whole home. So you can always say, no matter which of the blocks you're using, your home is covered unless you have like this, you know, multi-billion dollar mansion, then maybe you need uh, a few of those. And that's the first thing. So it literally harmonizes EMF because... EMF has an impact. We know that no matter which method you use, you can see also in your blood that it, that it has an impact and that can be neutralized by the blocks without the problem of not accessing Wi-Fi anymore. So it's not blocking it, it's literally harmonizing it. And, and the analogy is, you know, if I were to hit me in the head, it would hurt, um, right? But then if if it was transformed while he's about to hit and then he's moving that into slight acupressure, then it's beneficial to me. So it's, it's a touch, it's the same, same thing, but it's done in a different way. And that's pretty much what happens with, with these electromagnetic fields. That's how I would describe it as an analogy. That's the first thing. You can copy frequencies with these devices. Any frequency that you want to copy, you can copy so you can be your own homeopath. You can charge objects with quantum energy, which is very interesting because you could charge your silverware, your glasses, your, you know, your, your plates at home, um, and, and even your jewelry, for example. And then what happens is that these pieces have a higher vibration afterwards. So they transmit quantum energy for some people that don't know much about energy and can't sense it much they would at least tell you if you have this golden watch before and then after putting it in it looks more beautiful and they they won't be able to tell you why but then people that are more sensitive to energy they can feel it because it has a finer vibration it's uh that's pretty much what happens and then yeah you can you can charge foods you can charge water obviously and things like that and yeah, then there's some more use cases, but those are the main ones that, uh, that you can use. Of course, you can put your own hands or feet, et cetera, inside. And then, you know, these effects are actually greater and faster because the field inside the place is stronger and more powerful than outside the plates. Maybe I forgot something. <laughs> I think that's a perfect, a perfect explanation of it. And since it's affecting energy, I think people might ask, are there any things that should be avoided in it or around it, like electronics, for example? Can you use it too much? Like if someone was not used to that and then had it in their home and was charging all their water in it, for instance, um, could it cause changes very rapidly and lead to kind of uncomfortable effects? Or is it a very gentle process? It's a very gentle process, so you can charge all your water. Uh, that's no problem whatsoever. The only thing we caution is if someone is very new to energy work, you know, you've never meditated, you've never done yoga, you've never been exposed to anything quantum energy, and you live a relatively unhealthy life. If you then start to put your hands in these blocks 
for too long in the beginning, detox effects actually happen. And, and, and then, but you'll notice that. And that's, you know, it's a little uncomfortable feeling, but you will notice that usually before it happens. If you're very insensitive, then, you know, you may notice it a little bit too late and you feel like, oh, wow, this was a little bit too much. Then just go ahead and drink a lot of water and, and you'll be totally fine. But so in the beginning, we always tell people, if you're new to this, you know, put your hands in there maybe for five minutes at a time and just feel how it, how it does. And then you can increase it uh, a lot over time. That's what I would say, at least. Anything to add to that, Ian? I know also maybe we should have a caveat related to the allergy use just so that people aren't putting peanut butter in that. And then are there any cautions there? Yeah, well, I must say, so for, with this one, we're not making a claim in regards to the allergy, right? Blood, heart rate variability, all these things have been studied backwards and forwards uh, since years now. But with, with the food allergies, that's something that has been reported by many, many, many people uh, to help. Even we're talking people with gluten sensitivities and all of that, right? But do not do this at home. Do not try this because we need to have these studies first because there are too many different substances, too many different people. And, and there's no guidance we can provide at this point because we frankly also don't know. Is it, do you need to charge it for five minutes, six minutes? Does it work with all of the substances that can cause um, food allergies? But studies are uh, already being set up right now in regards to that. And as we get findings out of those studies, we will provide guidance and we'll also then make specific claims for certain things. But at this point, be careful with it. Uh, you know, don't, just, you know, our recommendation is to not try this specific application at home. Yeah, I, I would second that. <laughs> it's despite the fact that it does seemingly work uh, that way. Yeah, you, you don't want to be the one person who, uh, who finds out that it, uh, it turns out it doesn't work on a on a toxic celery allergy, you know, <laughs> it would be a bad scene. And you mentioned if you start having those detox reactions to drink more water. And so I'm curious about the hydration component here. It seems like in general, it's a good idea to hydrate well, and that often a lot of problems can be related to lack of hydration, but it also seems like anytime we're talking about anything related to energy, the body might have a higher need for water and hydration. Um, is that something people should be aware of when they start introducing these types of technology into their homes, just to be aware of having enough hydration? I would actually recommend that pretty consistently. Yeah, it, it's it also, water responds amazingly well to changes in energy fields. Um, you know, and, and since by molecular count, we're comprised of over 99% water molecules, uh, things that affect water profoundly, like a quantum block or, you know, any quantum energy manipulations really do have a pronounced effect on your physiology. So yeah, if you can, if you can stay very hydrated, uh, like Philip was saying, it, it definitely buffers things if you do start to have a detox reaction. So I certainly recommend that, but I pretty much recommend that across all fields. People are usually kind of grumpy and unfun when they're not hydrated properly. Yeah, so I would second that. And in and general, we say in the first two weeks of having these devices, especially in the first week, just make sure that you really are aware of, you know, drinking a lot more water. But then it's also interesting, the water, once you charge them, it's actually better water that you take in. And I don't, you know, I'm not really versed too much to explain how that works, but it seems indeed that the, the water can be absorbed in a, in a different way uh, by the cells than the water before you charge it. And that's pretty much what the Moto Institute uh, also says. How that exactly works on the scientific chemical level, I don't know. Maybe Ian knows that, but it's it's very interesting. So you hydrate more. Yeah. So actually, what's happening there is kind of an interesting function. the The water that your body uses for hydration isn't exactly the water that you drink. Uh, it's the water that's processed out through your mitochondria. So when you consume water, you're you're basically providing yourself with building blocks, just the same way you would akin to eating food and, you know, having a oxygen, right? All of those things are components that allow us to produce what our body needs. So when you take in that water, 
it actually goes into your mitochondria and your mitochondria are filled with nanoscopic rotors that literally rotate at 9,000 RPMs. And they process the water through as things cycle through your electron transport chain. And so when you're looking at things that are at that small a scale, literally shifts in the elemental components of the, of the hydrogen, for instance, like deuterium rich water versus deuterium depleted water make a huge difference. And so it's, it's a very quick, uh, quick leap to say, well, if things are operating at that subatomic scale with a profound interaction, then, then the things so close to where you're having quantum effects, that, that's in that same domain. It, uh, it can affect the way things move enzymatically. It can in affect tunneling and all sorts of effects like that. So yeah, when you charge something, you, you, that's really the scale that these things are operating at. It's maybe you know two levels just below that. So the, the impact seems really pronounced and outsized. Um, and, and I think because of that, when you modulate things at a quantum level, literally the water really is different because you're affecting it at, at its core and it's so close to that point source. And I also know you guys have a new service related to this that I'm excited to try that works from my understanding at a distance, which is a new concept. So can you guys explain what that is and how it works? Yes, and I didn't know we would uh, go into this, uh, but of course we can, because that's certainly, that's much more woo-woo uh, for, for anybody, because that's a hard concept already. If you have an infinity block in your hands, that's already like, oh, I don't plug it into the wall. How can this work, right? But then it works crazy, right? But now quantum entanglement is something that's, it's not a new concept, right? It has been proven multiple times in labs, but what's new is now that, you know, an everyday person now can basically tap into that in a very positive way. So we've created a system, we've built it for quite a long time that is extremely flexible that can provide quantum energy, pure quantum energy with different levels on the Hawking scale to a specific location. And that location could be you, for example, if you wanted it for you, it could be your home, it could be your car, it could be your phone, it could be your pet. So those are, it, it could be a business, frankly, also. Um, so those are the different types uh, of services that are being offered with a free trial. So there's a seven day free trial so that people can actually experience it and then see for themselves what it actually does. And you can play around with it because you can set different levels on the Hawking scale for you for the day. You can set it for the night. You can even elect a booster, select the booster and actually multiple boosters a day if you want. There's no limit to it really. That's in essence how it works. And if one understands how the quantum field works, then this is not crazy at all. It frankly is like it couldn't be any other way than that. But the problem is that the whole quantum field and how it works is just so new to us, right? It's just a, it's a very new concept that we have a hard time getting through that. But also here, we made sure that we don't just talk something and We'll make that trial available, but, but, but also studies have been done. So randomized, sham-controlled, double-blind studies were done to analyze the blood. And in 100% of the cases, positive changes happened to the people on all measurable levels. And um, yeah, there's still there's not a single person where it didn't work and it also worked rapidly and it works over distance. So it doesn't matter, you know, where you live, uh, you can benefit from that. And yeah, it's, it's profound. I mean, we understand that this is mind boggling of course, but at the same time it works, it just works and you can test it, you can measure it. And it's, it's called quantum upgrade. So that's, that's how that is called and you know in case you need the url it's quantumupgrade.io so not com.io and by the way well, so if we're happy if, if you want to uh to provide a, a special code for you and your listeners if they want to have more than one week 
you know, we're happy to provide two or three weeks for free for them so they, that they can really test it and see for themselves, is this something, how does this benefit? And, you know, one of the things I want to mention, you know, initially I said, you know, for families and, and kids. So obviously as a, as a company, we always need to be mindful uh, in regards to saying something about kids or pregnant women, right? I mean, there's so many, so much regulation out there. But if you think about, we're not making any disease claims. What is being optimized and balanced out here is the system as a whole. And kids grow up and they their brains are still growing, right? And developing and all of that. And if they, if they do that in this EMF soup that we're living in with bad food and toxins here and stressors there, and stressors are not just the ones that we, you know, take in through bad food and bad air and all of that. It's also, you know, what, what people had to go through the last two, three years, right? Those are also big stressors on kids. And if you can provide like an energy source that, can help them to be more balanced and be in a much more stable position so that they can buffer all those things um, in a much easier way. I, I think that's a great thing. And yeah, so people have reported just amazing results. We actually have several people that gotten uh, infinity blocks for the schools of their kids, uh, just to put them there. They have an energy field um, that is supportive and yeah, so I, I wanted to at least mention that without going into too many details because we, we, we can't really do that. Anything to add there, Ian? I think you were going to say something for a minute. Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in. It, it's interesting, you know, because a lot of this, it's, it is, like Philip had said, it, it's difficult for people to grasp, but once you, once you start to kind of get the, the edges of how this is really functioning, it couldn't be any other way. And the... The quantum entanglement that's occurring, it's for us, the, the experimental data is coming back faster than the science can actually keep up with it. So a lot of the things that we're able to test and repeat over and over and over and get data sets on that are very conclusive data sets, in reality, we still don't have a way to, to qualify it and to, no pun intended, quantify it. Um, because science is a, is a point on a line, right? You know, and when I taught biochemistry might, one of the things I always said was the best tech that we have today, the most thorough understanding that we grasp of anything, a thousand years from now, it's going to most likely appear laughable to most people because we're just at the very outer edge of what our understanding can be. And a lot of the functions that we see here, you know, it's repeatable and demonstrable, much like starting a fire. You know, people used fire for quite a while and knew what it was going to do and knew the results well before they understand the combustion cycles and what was actually happening with electron diffusion. And, you know, the science catches up behind the reality. And the benefit of kind of making the making the leap here is that the tangible, positive, beneficial effects to everyone are profound. And so I, as a scientist, I would just say that a lot of the things that seem difficult to grasp, you don't, you know, I'm going to be the last person to say, take a leap of faith, but I'm going to say, look at it, surmise what's going on, make a critical assessment of what the data says, and then base that not on what, you know, historical accounts are, because we're, we're just playing catch up. Um, you know, we'll, we'll codify this, we'll write it down, we'll figure out the mechanisms, we already know that it works. We can already prove that it works and see it re demonstrated remarkably well in 100% of cases, which is, again, kind of kind of bizarre from a scientific standpoint. But that's just the reality of it. So it, as kind of a, just to assuage some of the doubts of this, we're not going to probably have all the data and all of the results back in on how to codify this stuff for quite a while, you know, I mean, there have been really brilliant people working on a lot of the quantum physics aspects of this for decades. And quantum biology is probably my favorite thing to discuss and talk about. And this is really, we are at the bleeding edge. This is where the rubber meets the road of quantum biology. And the effects are profound, real time. You can see them, it's demonstrable over and over again, but the explanation 
again, you know, back to my analogy for fire, the explanation may be lagging a little bit, but that doesn't mean you need to eat things cold, you know, <laughs> just take, take this, run with it, fix your body, heal yourself, move forward in a positive way and leave it to, you know, me and the guys in labs to try and come back and codify all this stuff after the fact. Yeah, and it seems like a good recap of some of the things we've talked about is to focus on other things that are complementary as well. Like you both mentioned meditation, and I've seen a profound change in my own life from that as well. Meditate, let go of those negative emotions that can often kind of be really sticky and make these things difficult. Hydrate. I would also add get sunlight and get in nature, stand on the ground barefoot, and then implement things like this in your home so that when you're not outside in nature and you're not, you don't have everything perfectly lined up, you kind of have this advantage as well. Uh, I, I have a feeling we might get some follow-up questions about this one, so we might need to do another round one day. And of course, I will link in the show notes for you guys listening while you're on the go. Wellnessmama.fm will have links to all the specific things we've actually talked about. But any other points either of you want to mention before we wrap up and or any recommended reading or books that have been profoundly impactful to either of you that you would suggest? Um, I, I'll say the, the book that Philip mentioned earlier, and I know I've recommended this before, but Power Versus Force by David Hawkins is, is phenomenal. Uh, the Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss, both very, very brilliant tomes. <laughs> Kidding. Definitely take the Hawkins over Green Eggs and Ham. Um, no, and uh, other than that, I, I would say what you had just said, Katie, regarding releasing emotions and things like that, all of this functions based on waveforms and harmonics, and uh, those things are those things are waveforms too. So the negativity, you know, it's hard for two things to coexist in the same space, and the, and the strongest field is going to win. So uh, it sounds kind of corny, but the more you can imbibe yourself in love and feelings of gratitude, and share that with people in your community. I mean, one of the most important things for me, aside from eating right and exercising and doing meditation and all that sort of stuff is, is actually having a community of people that I genuinely love and want to be around. And so I, I would simply say that just feel more love and try and spread more love. And that'll have very profound effects. Yeah, I, that's, I can, I can only second that. That's amazing. And, you know, this, besides the love, the gratitude that you mentioned, that's always something, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard, you know, during times that are really intense, like the last several years and everyone has their own personal issues, but there's always something we can be grateful for. And if we can just find this one thing or the two things uh, throughout the day that, that shifts the energy within us, that's, that's a great simple thing to do in regards to power versus force. Um, you know, you can also Google it and then at least look at the scale so that you understand what this is even about. And then if this interests you further, you know, get the audiobook or so, but there's a way that you can at least understand a little bit of the concept by just looking at it on Google possibly. And then I want to mention, you know, how, how can you get in touch and how can you learn more about it? So we have a large telegram group that is uh, all about the quantum technology and the the various products and all of that. I will share that again, that link um, with uh, with you after this. Uh, it's called the Quantum Power Group on Telegram. It has over 5,000 members now, but it's a private group, so you can't find it on your own. So you literally have to have an invite link. We'll make that available. And then there's a small new group. Uh, it's uh, the Quantum Upgrade Community. That's for this service. So whichever you're more interested in, you can, you can pick and choose. You can find me in there too. So answers are que uh, uh, questions are answered that way <laughs> uh, you know so you can just get in there and and just read through it or ask any question you have awesome and i'll put links to all of those as well those will be all at wellnessmama.fm so you guys can find them all in one place and i know we tackled some pretty big concepts today that might be new for a lot of people listening. And I know I always learn a lot from both of you and that I've seen changes in my own life from this technology. So I'm excited we got to go deeper on it today. Thank you both so much for your time and for being here. I know you're both extremely busy and I'm so grateful that you're here. Our pleasure. Thank you so much for having us on, Katie. And thanks as always to all of you for listening and sharing your most valuable resources, your time, your energy, and your attention with us today. We're all so grateful that you did. And I hope that you will join me again on the next episode of the Wellness Mama podcast. <laughs>